uh, about the chess masters of past century, who do you think is the is the greatest? Apart from yourself, of course. I don't know about your own estimate of yourself, but of the others. Well, chess, you know, uh, so much depends on opening theory. Mm -hmm. So the champions of, say, the last century, mm -hmm. I mean, not the last, the century before last, uh, yeah. in the last century, they didn't know nearly as much as, say, I do and other players know about opening theory. Yeah. So if you just brought them back, you know, from the dead and they played Capa Blanca, Poles, Blanca. they wouldn't do well because they'd get bad openings. Mm -hmm. Or they might not do too well. But, of course, if they learned the openings, which they would very quickly, then they would... So, you cannot... My point is, you cannot compare the playing strength. You can only talk about natural ability more. You cannot... Because mm -hmm. now there's so much more opening theory, so much more memorization. Yeah. The memorization is enormously powerful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some kid of 14 today, or even younger, could get the opening advantage against Capablanca, or, or especially against the players of the previous century, from the 1900s, century, like, yeah. you know, like Morphy and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Steinitz and so on. You definitely get the opening advantage easily. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe they'd still be able to outplay the young kid of today, but maybe not, because mm -hmm. Now it is when you get the opening advantage, not only do you get the opening advantage, but you know how to play the opening advantage. Mm -hmm. They have so many examples of what to do yeah. from this position. Mm -hmm. and the so it's really unknown. deadly. It's very mm -hmm. deadly. That, that's why I don't like chess anymore. Yeah, I, I know. That's how I'm into, you know, you, so, you know, you have said that before, yeah. that uh, there's a, there's a, the possibilities are limited. Yeah, but getting back to, like, the talents, I think, mm -hmm. Morphe and, and Cabo Blank, uh, Mm -hmm. Enormous talent, you know. They're two of my favorites. Steinitz was very great too. Yeah. I, I Alekin was great, but I'm not a big fan of his. Uh, not but maybe it's just my taste. I, I just, I, you know, it's not my uh, taste. It's not my. I He's considered one of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've studied his games a lot. Mm -hmm. But I much prefer uh, Capablanca. Yeah. And Morphe. Mm -hmm. Is that because of some? Uh, some uh, imagination or uh, what you Yeah, call, I think uh, Alekin uh, had a rather heavy style. I think um, uh, Cabo was much more brilliant and talented. He had a mm -hmm. you know, real light touch. Everybody I've ever spoken to who, who saw Cabo Blanca play, mm -hmm. they still you know, speak of him with awe. You could show him any position. They say instantly he would tell you the right move. Yeah. Which I'm sure is an exaggeration because they're, they're quite weak. They wouldn't even know what the right move is if they saw it. But still, uh, well, so many people say that, there has to be something to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And you met a lot of people that... Uh, Knew them. I met, yeah. Met, I used to, yeah. When I used to go to the Manhattan Chess Club back in the 50s, I, I met a lot of old timers there. Mm -hmm. Real cab because he used to come around to the Manhattan mm -hmm. Club, I think, there in the 40s. In the Just 40s, before he yeah. died, yeah. Yeah. He died in the early 40s, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you met And they just spoke about Capital Blanks with mm -hmm. awe. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't... And I've never... Gonna, and, and it's impressed me because it wasn't just one person and I've never seen people speak about any chess player like that before or since, you know? Well, they speak about you in that way. And, well, that's and, uh, They do that in New York. You know, the chess players that play out in Boston Square, for example. Oh, but Capital Blanks really was... He was fantastic. Mm hmm he was, uh, yeah, he's, he's the greatest. Well, again, uh, but if he, even, even he, if you study him objectively, he had his uh, weaknesses. Uh, mm -hmm. he would, if, especially when you would play over his games from, with his notes, he would make idiotic statements like, uh, I, the, the rest, I, I played the rest of the game perfectly. Or like my, the, my play in the rest of the game couldn't be improved upon. But then you play through it and it's not true at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing that was so great about Kapovic, not only was he a fantastic player, but he really spoke his mind. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said what he believed was yeah. the truth. Yeah. You know? He didn't keep it for himself. No, no. Mm -hmm. He really said what he felt, mm -hmm. which was wonderful, you know? Mm -hmm. But the and, you know, he wanted to change the rules already back in, I think, the 20s. Yeah. He said it was chess was getting played out, and he was right. Mm -hmm. It's even more so now. Oh, now it's... The, now it's completely dead. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. It's all just memorization and prearrangement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a terrible game now. And the computers uh, yeah, can I, do it. Uh, 
Mm. It's a very is, uncreative game. Though. And everything is known, and there is nothing yeah. new. Well, I know. Let's not exaggerate. Mm. It, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, it's really dead. Mm -hmm. Champion Bobby Fischer has died at the age of 64. Fischer was the man who finally ended Soviet dominance of the game. He became the first American to win the world championship back in 1972. Many considered him one of the greatest players of all time. Passed away in Iceland after a long illness. Garry Kasparov is a Russian chess grandmaster. He's on the line now from Moscow. Thank you for joining us on Afternoon Live. How should we remember him, do you think? Oh, for sure, was one of the greatest names in our history. I was nine years old when he uh, had this triumph in Reykjavik in 1972, and I remember that everybody followed Fisher, his games, his uh, uh, statements. Uh, it was a um, uh, very fresh, uh, innovative uh, chess, and uh, I think we will not overestimate uh, by saying that his contribution was uh, revolutionary both at the chessboard and also in his fight to improve conditions for chess players and he could be called the pioneer and founder of professional chess. What do you remember about the games between uh, Fischer and Zvaski? Uh, yeah, I, I was a first category player, uh, so the rising star in my native town Baku in the Soviet Union and we all followed the, the games of that match and uh, Fischer's chess uh, was um, uh, so fresh and so new, and uh, we all uh, grew up under the strongest impression of uh, uh, Fischer's victories. Although there is a, a school of thought that thought he wasn't always very sportsmanlike. Um, Fischer um, left chess abruptly at age 29, and uh, the rest of his life uh, did very little of anything to promote the game of chess and to the country. Some of his uh, statements or eccentric or even unacceptable politically um, but I don't think that now it really matters because what what we, we have in our hands it's his uh, great contribution to our game and the rest uh, I think will um, will uh, be forgotten although it uh, um, distracted uh, uh, the uh, great contribution he did for our game he certainly fell foul of the U.S. authorities in later years, and I believe at the time of that game back in 1972 in Reykjavik, he said that he felt that he was uh, pitting the free world against the lying, cheating, hypocritical Russians. How did Russia view him? Um, in 1972, it was not Russia, Soviet Union, and uh, many in the Soviet Union recognized that Fischer uh, was taking on the mighty Soviet chess school, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, from ideological it was a fight of individual against uh, uh, a totalitarian system. Uh, and uh, I think that he, has, he had a lot of supporters, uh, even in the Soviet Union, because nobody viewed him as an American fighting Soviets. It was more of uh, you know, a, a great man uh, fighting mighty uh, machine. And he's, uh, um, he missed a great chance of, of promoting the game of chess because he was probably one of the most popular Americans in uh, mid-70s. The, the feeling uh, certainly at that time was that this was the Cold War being fought on the chessboard. Richard Nixon had written to him and uh, telling him how much he wanted him to win. He also heard from Henry Kissinger as well. Do you think that that was a similar view as far as the Soviet Union was concerned with Spassky? Um, no, I I think it's, it was it was not yet recognized as a matter of such importance because uh, Soviet dominance was so long, and only after this devastating loss in Reykjavik, Soviet authorities uh, uh, put all the resources to restore the Soviet um, chess glory, and that's how uh, my predecessor Anatoly Karpov got this tremendous 